Hello and welcome to this hobby tips video where we're going to be upgrading the DIY wet palette. I've been using this one for ages, it's using an old ice cream tub lid. It's pretty grim on the inside and partly that's because it's got all these little struts here that sort of collect the grime out of the water even though I do scrub it and clean it. I took a lot of inspiration for this new build from the faux hammer article on wet palettes. It's really comprehensive, I'll link it in the description. The reason why I want to upgrade this is firstly it's quite deep here, I could do with being a bit shallower. Uh, I, I want it to be a bit bigger and I also want it to last a little bit longer. Obviously this is open air, it doesn't close. It's fine for a session if you're working on it during the day, but it's not very good by the time it comes to the next day. So following the faux hammer article, grab myself uh, one of these sealable sandwich tub things. A lot of what I'm using here today is going to be based on what you can buy in the shops in the UK, but there's a few particular issues when it comes to sourcing the right stuff in the UK, specifically the type of paper that you'd use, and we'll come to that shortly. So this is from the range, uh, it costs £2.79. It's it's branded my clip although it does say comax on the back a real cheap sort of starting point for this project so the idea with it being airtight is that the paint will stay uh, more moist inside i'm going to use the lid as the wet palette and when we're sort of finishing up you know overnight we'll put the base of the tub on top and then just sort of clip it on like that you're looking at sort of uh, 20 centimeters about sort of 12 and a half 13 centimeters so straight away you can see a benefit over the round tub here there's less wasted space for a start the edges are a little bit shallower so it's easier to get in but we do have these clips that are gonna maybe get in the way of the paintbrush only time will tell on that you can see in my old wet palette that i've used uh, like a felt material here so you could use kitchen roll not like toilet paper uh, like kitchen roll that holds together or uh, like a thin foam cloth but i like i like the felt because i can cut it to shape really easily i've already got some because my girlfriend has it for some kind of I think I don't know what so I'll just nick a bit of that and um, you know when you sort of clean out the water screw it out get rid of the old water swill it out and if you really need to you can chuck it in the washing machine it looks like she's got this from Hobbycraft in the UK so yeah produced for Hobbycraft uh, that would actually be plenty to go double there but what I've done is cut out a single layer cut to the shape of the, the tray here so it just fits in nicely and we're going to use testing it with just like a single layer to start with so I'm going to pour a load of water on that this is just tap water probably using distilled water would be better but for this test we're just going to use tap water we want this to be as like cheap and easy and basic as possible during this test okay so that's kind of what you want you want quite a lot of water in there you don't want it to be like this here where it, you can see it sort of dried out it's still damp but it's dried out you want it you know quite flush with water what i'm going to do here now for the uk viewers is test four different types of paper that you can get easily in the supermarkets and i'm going to show exactly which ones they are because there is a bit of an issue with using the right kind of paper so in the uk we've got like baking paper which is like baking parchment that's one thing and then you've got grease proof paper which is something else although it's kind of like similar so the grease proof paper means that you can grease the paper before you put it in the oven for your cooking and it's fine because it's grease proof you can grease it up and that's what you do when you're doing your cooking the baking paper or baking parchment it comes with like a non-stick layering already on it so you don't need to grease it when we use it on the wet palette the two different types of paper will react differently we want some of the water to be able to come up through the wet palette just to keep the paint moist so rather than coming at this with a idea of like oh you know one type of paper is going to be better than the other we're just going to test it I was already using some what I recall was baking parchment paper. I've got um, a piece of that which we'll use a small part of that and we'll put in this corner here and I've got uh, Wilkinson's Best of Both Greaseproof grease proof and Bake Paper. <laughs> so greaseproof and baking paper. So if we look on the back of this it says ideal for lining baking tins, wrapping sandwiches, covering cheese and meat in the refrigerator and separating food portions in the freezer to prevent sticking. So suggesting that it has some kind of non-stick surface on it already doesn't say anywhere on here that you need to grease it so it makes me think that maybe this is not actually grease proof paper and it's more like baking paper baking parchment so ie what we want this might already be the same stuff as this but i can't remember so that's the wilco stuff there uh, i just popped down the shops like literally just now and got to got some morrison's uh, non-stick baking and grease proof paper so again this is much like that wilco stuff it's sort of somewhere in between the two i don't know basically it says the same kind of thing as the wilco stuff it doesn't say that you need to grease it so again this potentially might be okay so let's get a bit of this as well so the morrison stuff we're going to put up in the top right corner there and like almost like our control option here 
is this Baker Foil non-stick baking paper. So this definitely isn't greaseproof paper. No need to grease the tin. So this specifically is not greaseproof paper. One issue with it though is it looks like it's kind of brown and it's also got this kind of like texture to it. Okay, yeah, so straight away you can see that that's got a texture to it. It's not that pronounced when I sort of feel it. I'm gonna pop that one there so we won't mistake that one. So one potential issue is gonna be um, just when we're like viewing the colors on the palette, you know, when we're sort of thinning stuff down to a glaze, it's gonna look a little bit warmer when we're viewing thin paint through this. But um, that's probably not that much of an issue because the color of the, the foam or the cloth or whatever it is you've got holding the water will show through anyway. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna put some different manufacturer's paints on the palette and then uh, we're just gonna leave it. So we'll leave it for a certain period of time and we'll come back and we'll see how the paint is reacting on the different swatches. Oh, by the way, if you notice when we come back to the video later that there's extra paints put on the palette, it's because I'm in the middle of painting up this lad for the Space Crusade series. So yeah, there might be some extra greens and browns put on the wet palette. Game color earth. Uh, let's grab a Citadel paint as well. Uh, maybe we'll grab the Uriel yellow. Uh, what I'll do is um, go through, put a few paints on now. I'll show you the paints uh, rather than sort of like talk through them all. And we'll put a blob of the paint on neat. And then next to it, we'll we'll thin some of the paint down to kind of like, like a glaze consistency because they'll dry out completely more quickly than the thicker paint. So yeah, it's not going to be possible to make sure that each of these glazes is exactly the same consistency. So it's just going to be a case of looking at what sort of glaze we're making and then comparing that glaze to what we get in like the certain amount of hours into the future. Um, we're not going to be able to compare the glaze that we get from here to this one because when I mix it up now, it's not going to be exactly the same. So I hope, hope that makes sense. You know, there's some of the yellow, it's pretty thin. I'd say it's kind of like a, not the thinnest glaze in the world, but you know, pretty thin. So yeah, looking at the paints on the palette here, you can see that we've got some separation of the pigments and the mediums on a few of these different paints. That armor brown separating out is something that I would see, you know, I'd expect to see that. I think what we'll do is we'll just sort of like grab a little bit of the glaze stuff and just see how wet it still is. But I also did get down and have a very close look at the paper through a magnifying glass and I couldn't see any sort of like micro beading of water. So there wasn't a lot of water coming up through the papers. In this little side test, we're adding some water on top of the Baker foil, the Morrisons and the Wilco papers. A couple of hours later, we're having a look to see what water it seeps through, and there's about the same amount of water seeping through on all of them. Let's have a quick look at this uh, yellow glaze here. Okay, yeah, that's definitely still wet and usable. You can see that that's still quite wet. So yeah, I'll spread that out a little bit, and we'll see if uh, these very small bits dry um, sort of overnight. Yeah, again, if that has dried out a little bit, it's not much. Mix a bit of water in into sort of more of a glaze consistency like we've done on, on the palette there. So far, all of these papers are seeming quite similar. So I'm wondering if there's like a, a marketing terminology thing going on here where all of these are referred to to some degree as grease proof paper, whereas they're not actually like traditional grease proof paper, which would have been like waxed or something like that with a, a like an impermeable layer over the top of it. Because we don't want an impermeable layer. We want some of the water to seep through. You can see straight away the stuff that was thinned down a little bit into a glaze consistency has pretty much dried. That could be revived a little bit. Uh, there's a little bit more life left in that, but it was a slightly bigger puddle. So yeah, basically those are not really usable. Let's have a look what we got over here then. Let's just grab a bit of the thick paint. Um, we'll try some of this magenta. Yeah, you know, that's that's pretty good still. That, that's still perfectly usable. 24 hours later. Uh, let's have a look what we've got in here. Uh, some condensation here, so um, it's definitely keeping the moisture inside. Okay, yeah, so some further separation, especially on the armor brown. The yellow over here was probably spread out the most, so we'll see if this is still usable. Yep, that's still wet. Uh, that's still a good good glaze consistency there. That has been spread out very, very thinly though, so if any of it was going to dry up, it would be this. This bit would dry up first, and it hasn't. And some of the earth, uh, which is, you know, usually quite thick, yeah, I'm wondering if, if anything, that might have thinned itself down a tiny little bit by being on the wet palette. If it has, it's only a small amount. Yeah, quite a lot of water in there, so it's doing its job. Going to go straight to this thin down yellow glaze here. Let's see if it's still wet. And it is. Still working. Try a little bit of the uh, you shafty bone. Yep, that's still active. Uh, let's just try a bit of the earth up here. 
that feels like that's taken on some water a little bit. All of these seem to be operating at a similar level. There isn't a difference so far anyway with this baker foil baking paper as opposed to these three which are like grease proof baking paper. I think they're basically the same thing. I'm, I feel like that's thinned itself down a little bit with the water coming up from underneath but not much you know considering that's been three days in there that's still usable okay three days in i'm confident to say that this is definitely working but all of these papers are working and with that in mind gone and bought some like proper baking parchment i thought this was baking parchment this baker foil but actually i found out afterwards that this is their baking paper and they've also got a baking parchment so based on that i thought maybe these four are actually the same kind of thing and based on how they're performing they do seem to be if not the same kind of thing they're certainly performing about the same for this purpose so what I'm going to do is I'm going to empty all this out refresh the water clean the cloth and then we'll set up a final test we'll just have one of these papers here probably the Wilco paper because it's the cheapest may as well you know do a final test on the cheapest one on half the palette put some of this uh, new baking parchment on the other half so yeah I'll load it up with some greens and some uh, you know browns and greys that we're painting up these Gretchen's with this will be a good test to see how the paint reacts on the model in this final section, we're going to test the paint that's been on the palette now for 40 hours. It's been sealed, so, uh, you know, it shouldn't have dried out, but you can see there's quite a lot of separation and near enough all of the paints uh, need to be mixed again to mix the medium and maybe a little bit of water that's come through back in with the pigments. And the paints that we're going to test in this final section are the Cadian Flesh Tone, which we're going to use as a glaze to warm up parts of the skin, the Doomball Brown, which, which we're going to use in two ways. We're going to use it to make some spots around the side and back of his head, so quite fine control. So if the paint is way too runny, it won't work for that. And then we're also going to mix it into a glaze to cover over the same areas. We're going to use some of the Wah Flesh to glaze into the shadows. We're going to add some red ink to the palette, and that's going to warm up the face a little bit more. And we're going to add some Earth to the palette to paint the teeth. So those ones we're adding to the palette, it's really just to compare to the paints that are already on there and we're going to use some of the German grey that's already on the palette mixing with a bit of black to paint the eyeballs and then we're going to use some white which we'll add to the palette early on so it would have sat on the palette for about an hour and we're going to use that to put some reflection dots on the eyes. So while you're watching me do those things uh, with this model I'm just going to give a quick summary now of my findings for all these tests. The first thing is that for £2.79 I think this is really really good value for making your own wet palette and the goal of the wet palette is basically just to keep the paint wet and workable over a longer period of time. It totally works, it absolutely outstrips having the paint on a dry palette and it's way better having the lid to clip on than having an open air wet palette which is what I had previously. As a ballpark figure I'd say that around about 8 hours of having the paint open to the air is about as much as you're going to get away with before you do start to notice it drying potentially a little bit. Having said that, when you then put the lid on, we don't get any more drying. What you're going to then find though is that the longer you leave it, the more water comes up through the paper and into the paint. I did notice that maybe after the sort of 48 hour-ish mark, there was a definite thinning of the paint across all the papers I've used. And so that brings us on to the papers. Really, I noticed hardly any difference across all the papers that I use, including the final paper that I use, which was actual, you know, marketed as baking parchment. So what that tells me is my initial thoughts that maybe the grease proof tag was a bit of just marketing BS probably is correct I, I didn't really notice much difference at all with the way the paint behaved on the wet palette across the different papers when I was painting the models to summarize from that I would say if you're specifically going to go for one of the ones I've used today just use whichever is the cheapest because they all work totally fine I'd be really really interested to know especially if you're in the UK if you've bought any baking paper or baking parchment or whatever you want to call it from different places how did you find it did you notice anything different to what I found here if you did leave a comment in the comments below because you know hopefully this will be a useful resource you know for anyone else that's looking for specific papers and how they react in the wet palette I hope you've enjoyed the video even if you're not from the UK and you've got no idea what Wilco's is or Morrison's <laughs> Hopefully it's still uh, been a, you know, a useful video. So if you're into watching some, you know, reasonably thorough tests of different hobby products, you know, think about subscribing if you're not already and give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Thanks for watching.